Thank you. The Housing, Urban Development, and Zoning Committee will now come to order. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Davis. Alderman Cohn. Alderman Coder. Alderman Boyd. Present. Alderman Muhammad. Alderman Martin. Present. Alderman Narayan. Here. Alderman Evans. Present. Chairman Boyd. Present. President Reed. Alderman Davis. Alderman Cohn. Alderman Coder. Alderman Muhammad. President Reed. By present, you have quorum. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, I'll entertain a motion for adoption of the minutes dated June 24th, 2021. So moved. Second. It's been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Davis. Alderman Cone. Alderman Coder. Alderman Boyd. Aye. Aye. Alderman Muhammad. Alderman Martin. Aye. Alderman Narayan. Aye. Alderman Evans. Aye. Chairman Boyd. Aye. President Reed. Five aye votes. Okay, you approved the minutes. Next, we're gonna have a special presentation. I can't, is Noel Pfeffer on? I don't see him. Noel Pfeffer, are you there? Okay, I don't see him, but I do see um, someone I wanted to have presented to the committee and to the public, a young man who has taken on the reins of St. Louis Development Corporation as the executive director. And so I will introduce to everybody right now, Mr. Neil Richardson, the new executive director of St. Louis Development Corporation. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Alderman Boyd. Uh, for the opportunity to speak with this group today. Um, I'm very excited for the opportunity um, to be the, the new executive director of St. Louis Development Corporation. As a lifelong resident of the city of St. Louis, um, I truly believe uh, housing and urban development is a key component to really helping advance economic opportunity for all of our residents and moving our city forward. Um, so again, I look forward to partnering and working with each of you um, as we continue to create greater opportunities for our region to thrive. Okay, well, certainly welcome. Um, we're looking for exciting things uh, to start happening in the city of St. Louis, especially around the um, more distressed neighborhoods throughout the city. Um, there's a great opportunity we have right now with board bill number two to kind of set some funding streams in place. And um, I'm excited to have an opportunity to work with you and uh, SLDC staff and uh, planning to make some good stuff happen. So again, welcome. Thank you so much. I appreciate the invitation. All righty. So next we will do uh, board bills and resolutions for review. Um, I'm going to take um, resol up resolution number 39. Dan, uh, all, Dan Gunther is not on the committee. And so we'll go in, in that order. If Alderman, I think I saw Alderman Gunther. Alderman Gunther, are you present? I am, thank you, Chairman Boyd. Okay, you're up for discussion on resolution number 39. All right. Um, thank you, uh, Chairman and members of the HUDS committee. Uh, resolution 39 is a resolution that is asking for uh, just simply a tax assurance. Um, we have a business called STC Warehousing uh, at Sydney Street and Second. Um, they are looking to expand, uh, putting about a little over $2 million um, uh, addition onto their warehouses, uh, which will be bringing about 35 uh, new jobs um, to the uh, to STC Warehousing. Um, so I worked with, uh, SEC, SLDC, and then also with the mayor's office uh, to come up with something that would uh, work for everyone. Um, the mayor's office, uh, 
suggested that we just do a assurance program. Um, so basically the uh, entire improvements to this property uh, will be assessed at full value and then they will just be giving a uh, assurance uh, over the next 10 years of what their taxes will be. So um, no abatement here, uh, no, no sort of incentive, just a assurance. So I guess I will welcome Zach or SLDC to uh, go over some of the numbers if you would like. Um, I guess it's Zach there. I'm here. Yeah. Okay, Zach, you're up. John uh, ran through the model also, just to be on the safe side, and scored three out of five. And the present value of the incentive is about $44,000. So we're about to uh, freeze the tax, not freeze the taxes, assure the taxes at about a little over $52,000 a year. So uh, we did a square foot average of the other two properties that are paying full taxes and uh, proposed that for the new addition. That's how we came up with that value. Okay, does Jonathan want to make a presentation to show us his scorecard? John should be on the call. John, are you there? Okay, well, while he's saying that up, Zach, um, no, I'll wait, is he here? And if I look kind of crazy because I'm doing wild studies, I'm using my iPad, so it's a little different than the computer. So I have to do all this swiping to see if I can find people. Um, sure. Don't see Zach. Well, let's go ahead and take some um, questions from the committee. Um, let's see here. Alderwoman Davis. Mr. Chairman, I don't have any questions, but I would like for Zach or Jonathan to give a little bit more explanation of what an assurance is for the public. Uh, so that they know that it's not a lot of difference between that and uh, certain tax abatement uh, situations where the taxes are frozen and you still get the same amount that was there before. So they just need to explain it, that's all. Uh Tax abatement is usually frozen near the pre-development uh, rate. So it's usually if it's a vacant lot, it would be extremely low uh, for over a period of five to 10 years. Tax insurance, we come up with a dollar figure, uh, usually as an average dollar figure for a neighborhood or what's nearby and uh, propose that for the what the developer proposed owner would pay for the next five to 10 years. That way they can budget in uh, with their bank or mortgage um, lender how to uh, finance the deal. It's a safe, it's a provide, uh, sorry, John just walked in, I apologize. The, uh, that's the best way to create a savings for, or at least propose a budget for the, the bank. So for a 10 year tax returns. Okay, Alderman Cole. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chair. Uh, Jonathan, what what would be the difference between, uh, or Zach, what would be the difference between this tax assurance and a the value of a tax abatement at, you know, 10 years at 75%? 10 years at 75%, you'd be paying less for taxes um usually i would say probably you pre -pay, instead of paying like fifty two thousand, you'd probably be paying maybe anywhere from 25 to thirty thousand. so and uh so let's say it, like what is the uh and i i apologize i was a little late to the conversation here but uh like what's the address what's the project size it's a little over $2 million. It's the third phase of a, of a warehouse. They, they built two previous uh, phases. Their contract with the AB to store kegs and other types of things in these warehouses. Uh, it's about 35 jobs are proposed. Okay. So I, I, I mean, I just, I, I think it's, uh, you know, 
worth just mentioning. Yeah, I mean, and I, I texted my colleague from the ninth ward this, but I mean, it's kind of like tomato, tomato, you know, tax abatement versus tax assurance. Uh, you know, they have different methodologies behind them, but it essentially gets to the same end goal. You know, I mean, we could tax assure something at $35,000 or we could tax assure something at $50,000 or we could tax abatement, you know, something for five, 10, 15, 20 years at any rate, really, you know, 20%, 30%, 50%, 75%, 95%. Um, so, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, this is a tax oh, incentive no. um, that is being offered. And, uh, you know, I just, I think we just need to be transparent about that as well. So, um, you know, I know tax assurance sounds much better than tax abatement. Um, and if that's what we're going to do, that's what we're going to do. And that's fine. But let's just be honest about it. Alderman Cohn, this is John Ferry. Can I jump in on that for a moment? Sure. So, yeah, you are correct that, um, so the original concept of tax insurance was that we would be uh, essentially freezing the tax value at the full value of the taxes. So that I'm aware, uh, I'm aware yeah, of how so that, tax abatement works. Well, I'm saying the tax assurance concept was that it would be the full value of the taxes and then we would freeze it. And then what ended up happening was we ended up getting a couple of projects where uh, we sort of merged or blended tax abatement with tax assurance. So like I think the project on the Cleed was like that where we ended up giving them, it was like 75% tax abatement and then added on uh, tax assurance to it so that it would sort of ensure that basically they would know exactly what their um, their estimated bill was. And so the way we try to provide transparency in that regard is we, um, first of all, if there was abatement on there with assurance, it would show an abatement percentage on the right column there um, under incentive okay. summary. Um, and second of all, when we show the value, estimated value of the abatement, um, that sort of gives an indicator of um, you know, how much based on um, market values, you know, we're sort of lowering their tax bill by over 10 years. And as you can see there in this project, it's only $44,000. So in this case, we are um, bringing up the taxes to the estimated full value. And the way that we came up with that value is we looked at the um, properties right next door and actually talked to the assessor um, about this and um, came up with a value that was equivalent on a per square foot basis as other buildings that were built in the immediate vicinity within about the last three to five years. So um, in this case, we do believe that this is a true tax assurance and not a, a blend of tax abatement and tax assurance. Let me ask you this, Jonathan. Uh, so in the situation with the tax abatement, if the property were to uh, devalue uh, and go below the you know abatement value, uh, essentially they don't have any incentive being provided at that point in time, correct? That would be correct. At that point so in time, with the tax assurance, are they still paying those taxes if the value goes down? Yes. So they would. The, um, the they would have the option at that point to basically come to the city and say we want to cancel or rescind our tax abatement and tax assurance. And so at that point in time, it would just go to the regular tax rolls. But they would have to make that option. They would have to do that. Every uh, alderman, every project over million dollars goes into a redevelopment agreement and that redevelopment right. agreement tells them they have to pay this amount for the next 10 years they would have to come back to us to rescind that agreement but that's a, that's a, i just want to be clear that that's in both cases of tax abatement and tax assurance correct uh, to be honest anytime you see me or john's face there's an incentive involved so great right. to that so, point uh i'm sorry I'm like, john to that point we want to see your face and yeah. all my colleagues, if you guys would speak and turn your video on, that would be helpful. So people will know who's speaking for the people that may just turn tune in for the first time. Yeah, I apologize. I'm at my office computer and I don't have a camera on this computer. Yeah, and okay. I'm in a basement with very poor reception and turning the camera on makes everything go wonky. Okay, so my apologies. It will be helpful if we know these logistics 
that we can continue to provide full transparency on what we're doing. I think uh, having a face when people are speaking is really important. So um, we'll deal with it today. Uh, but in the future, if you guys would help me um, by adhering to that, I'd appreciate it. And Jonathan, we needed to see a presentation from you. So I guess we can't see the presentation. I can share my screen, so I'm not just on the phone. I can see okay. you guys. You just, I just don't have a camera. Um, I'm sorry. And, and while he's doing that, uh, we'll come right back to you on the cone. Does that mean that you're coming back to me now? or? Yeah, I mean, you still have the floor. It's still okay. on you. Yes. yes. I just wanted him to bring up his presentation so that maybe it'll make, you know, It'd be a little more clear. Yeah. So, and uh, Chairman Boyd, I used to have my photo up when I wasn't on camera. So I'm not sure what changed with my Zoom settings that that's no longer present. So I apologize, but um, it was there at one point in time and I haven't changed my settings. So I'm not sure why, what made that drop, but I'll figure it out and try and get it back. You might have gremlins in your computer or something on your phone. <sighs> You know, I was a big fan of that film, and now as I'm older, I, it makes so much more sense. <laughs> I just, I, I don't want to belabor the subject anymore. I just, I, I believe my colleague from the Ninth Ward said that, the, you know, this isn't an incentive, and it, it very clearly is. So I just, I want to make sure that, you know, we're being open and transparent about that. Thanks. Okay. Um, and while... We try to get his screen loaded. Let me go to Alderman Kotar. Thank you, Chairman. Can you see and hear me? Yes, sir. All right, good. Um, we're a year into Zoom. It's pretty baffling to me that city employees still don't have cameras on their computers. Maybe that's something we can spend some of this rescue plan money on. Um, uh, I guess this question is either for SLDC or for Alderman Gunther. Is this uh, is this expansion currently under construction? Have they broken ground? No. Okay. Um, you know, I've heard quite a few times now on recent projects from the new administration about the you know their vaulted but for test. Um, I mean, do we have uh, any indication that these guys that it sounds like the brewery is their customer? Are they going to go elsewhere if they don't get this incentive? Which is very clearly is an incentive. I'd like to echo my, my, my colleague from the 25th Ward. This is definitely an incentive. Whether you call it an assurance or an abatement, it's, it's still an incentive, contrary to what the Alderman from the Ninth said. Oh, well, first of all, I, I'm not sure. Um, I absolutely said it was an incentive. I think that I meant to clarify that it was not an abatement. Um, but yes, it is an incentive. Um, so just to clarify that. Um, but the, uh, so after meeting with the developer or after meeting with the team from STC, um, they have uh, two other locations, uh, one in Nashville, Illinois, and one in Columbus, Ohio. Um, they were looking at the three locations um, and St. Louis is the third as to where to build this. Um, they want to build it in St. Louis because they have their two largest warehouses uh, right here on Sydney Street. Um, so this is uh, looking at three locations. This is how we, determined that it would be uh, feasible for them. Um, I also, um, you know, obviously everyone has uh, all the developers in the entire, you know, U.S. right now are having issues with um, materials. Uh, but one of the things that the, that the owners of STC were very clear about is that um, the type of warehouse, the metal structure that they're building, um, they said that there's only five uh, companies that make these sort of metal structures. Four of them are, um, have taken on nothing but um, warehousing for Amazon. And so there's only one uh, company that they were able to actually even have erect this sort of structure. Uh, so they said that the price has significantly gone up, in which case that's why they were looking for uh, some sort of assistance from the city um, to, uh, to be able to build this. Um, I, I will also add that uh, through Talking with SLDC and the mayor's office, um, because this is a uh, the in, in what is it enhanced enterprise zone an EEZ EEZ zone, um, you know, and I think just last week or the week before, uh, Alderman Coder, you know, you had the uh, an EEZ uh, project that um, deferred some sales taxes and personal property taxes, some of those incentives. So we had kind of a whole lot of incentives on the board. 
And the only thing that SLDC and the mayor's office and I agreed to was just a straight assurance. So full development cost, best value of property, and then uh, assurance for 10 years of what their rate will be so that they can uh, come up with a better uh, financing plan for it. So, but yes, we are competing with two other locations. So let me ask this, if we don't grant this, uh, this tax assurance, do you believe this business would uh, would build this facility elsewhere? I do. Okay. Um, is anyone here from STC or any representatives of STC today? I did not see any. Um, yeah, looking looking through the uh, participants, I don't see anyone from. STC, but I do see I do see uh, Noel Pfeffer from the mayor's office on here, and he might be able to say a few words also, since he was the one that was uh, kind of reigning. Um, you know, did, the, we, our, did we advise them of this hearing date or invite them to attend? Uh, I personally did not invite them. I don't know if SLDC did, but I, I felt pretty comfortable representing because I had an hour and a half, two hour uh, conversation with the owners, uh, um, I guess, when we propose this assurance. So. Okay. Well, I guess Alderman from the ninth and Chairman, I'm not comfortable voting on this if, you know, we don't even get to hear from. I, I appreciate the Alderman from the ninth's uh, assurances about this company's plans uh, if they, you know, if they don't get this, this tax assurance. But, you know, it'd be nice if they'd at least come in front of the committee, tell us about their business. Um, so I, I'm not comfortable voting on this today, you know, without a hearing from a representative of STC. Okay. Any, uh, all the woman, Pam Boyd. Uh, Mr. Chair, most of the questions have been asked. They haven't been answered. And, uh, it seems like it's a play with words. So I'm just kind of nervous with this whole situation uh, in regards to this. And I kind of uh, piggy bank on Alderman, uh, I don't want to call him by his first name, Jack Coder, because normally doesn't the people that want to uh, be heard, they want to plead their case, they come to the HUD's meeting. So is this something different that we're doing or? Well, uh, all the women, it is traditional that if a developer wants incentives from the city that we get a chance to interact with the developer. It's, it's an anomaly that they're not invited. But we can invite them. Okay. I, I would feel better if they would come forth and kind of explain their position. Okay. All right. Thank you. Alderman uh, Muhammad. And uh, Jonathan, it seems that we are not able to see your presentation. So you can stop sharing your screen, please. Jonathan. Hello? Can anybody hear me? I can hear you, Chairman. Yeah, I can, we can hear you. Okay. We can it, hear you. Is there a way to... Um, stop Jonathan's screen from sharing. There we go. Oh, now he brings it up. <laughs> okay, we're, we're, we're gonna move on. Um, Alderman Muhammad. He's not here. Alderman Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I kind of echo my colleagues on the whole abatement versus the assurance. Um, in fact, the assurance uh, or assurance is specifically listed in the prevailing wage ordinance because it is an incentive. Um, I guess my question is for you, Mr. Chairman, are we going to hold off and uh, wait for these developers to come before voting this out or should I ask my questions now? Um, we can hold off, but you're also welcome to ask your questions now. Okay, that's fine. Um, I was just curious, um, this is an extension. Um, sorry, I'm on my phone. This is an extension of the project that was, uh, I think it was two sessions ago, perhaps. Um, Alderman Gunther, is that correct? Is this the um, same? 
I've never had a uh, project with STC um, okay, warehouse. Right. I just had it confused. So this is a new one for, okay. for me. Um, and then you said that it's an additional 35 jobs. Sorry, can you hear me? We can hear you. I think he's having trouble. Yes, with it's like okay. Two point three million dollar uh, construction and thirty five jobs. Okay. All right. Um, I just wanted to. I just had a question about if that was new jobs um, coming in. Um, otherwise, I'll wait for. Am I frozen? Uh, a little bit, but I I could understand what you're saying. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Yeah, Alderman Gunther, you sound like R2D2, something like that. It's, it's real choppy, but we can make most of it out. Um, Alderman Narayan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just one question for uh, the Alderman from the 9th, if he is uh, unfrozen at the moment. Um, so on these 35 jobs, do you have any indication of, of what the the pay is going to be what types of jobs these are. All right, is that better on my sound? Uh -uh. Yes. No. Okay, I try to close some tabs. Um, yeah. So the the jobs are mostly, yeah, the jobs are uh, the warehouse jobs. They're mostly driving forklifts. Um, there's also some. Uh, handling and cleaning of uh, some of the supplies that come in. So from what I understand, they take a lot of the spent uh, kegs and materials, clean them, um, refurbish them, and then put them back into, uh, sell, sell them back to um, whoever fills them. So uh, they do they do AB, but they also do um, like Pepsi. They do um, a lot of uh, smaller breweries. So they pretty much do all the canning and kegs and bottles for just about any soda, beer uh, production in the entire region. So they are all going to be, um, they said they, most of them are just uh, hourly jobs, uh, but they do starting pay at $15 an hour. And um, and they have health full health insurance, um, and so they are mostly all just driving a forklift. Okay, and forklift operator is a that's a decent job. Um, all right. Uh, well, it doesn't sound to me like we're likely to have a vote on this today. So uh, I guess we'll get another bite at the apple uh, with asking the developers some questions. And thank you for your time, Alderman. Uh, next, Alderman Evans. Thank yes, you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, Alderman Gunther, I just wanted, to, uh, I guess, a, a, a clear understanding as to what type of business this is. For, for. It's a warehouse. It's a warehouse. Okay, and what exactly do they do? So they have all the storage containers for PepsiCo, Snapple, Coca-Cola, Anheuser-Busch, uh, any, I think there's a few other um, small breweries. So they, they hold containers um, and then they distribute the containers to whoever fills them with the final product. Okay. Thank you, Alderman. And thank you, Mr. Chair. You're welcome. Okay, so uh, seems like um, we need a presentation from the developer. Um, so we'll schedule another meeting to hear this. There's another meeting scheduled for tomorrow, Alderman Gunther. Um, it may be moved. It may be moved to 4 p.m. So stay tuned. I think it's scheduled for 11 right now. Um, so we'll do that. But uh, Jonathan. Jonathan. Yes, sir. Okay, here's what I think would be helpful because there's still a little confusion about assurance versus abatement. So 
will you prepare an example for this particular resolution? What 10 years of abatement would look like? What 10 years of assurance looks like? So they will kind of make sense to people um, because yeah, yeah, it it is in the center. And I I always want to smile whenever the alderman from the ninth ward comes with an incentive bill um, because I know how he really doesn't like incentives. So, um, but that doesn't stop me from supporting uh, the initiatives. So anyway, I just, it always give me a chuckle and he knows why. Uh, so with that, Alderman, um, let's, let's talk later on today uh, so we can confirm what time and see if your developer can make that time. If they can't, we'll reschedule it for next week. Um, but uh, I'm de- definitely willing to work with you on this. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. And uh, yeah, I will reach out to, well, I guess myself or SLDC will reach out to the developer. Um, I know I've sat through many of HUD's, uh, many of neighborhood development committees, many committees where the alderman is able to represent the project. Um, so I was not uh, I was not aware that uh, you all would want the builder here. So I will reach out to them. Thank you. Okay, and I just realized that we have someone signed up to speak against the resolution. So I should do that. Um, is there a Mr. Sean Strasbaugh? I think I spelled it right. It's uh, with Government Relations International Code Council, Mr. Sean Strasbaugh. Are you here? Going twice. Okay, so discussion for the day on Resolution 39 is over. Next up is Board Bill number 51, sponsored by Alderman Brandon Bosley and Alderman Page. So, Alderman Bosley. Uh, thank you, Alderman. Can you give me one minute here, please? Sure. Let me jump this jump. Um, Alderman Bosley, if you need more time, we can move on to uh, board bill number 28. Yes, that, that'd be helpful. And I can go after 28 if that's okay. 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 So next up before us is board bill number 28 sponsored by Alderman Davis. Thank you, Miss. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I am going to ask that uh, board bill number 28 uh, is actually previewed first by the speaker that I have listed there. That's Mr. Three people. So I have signed up as speakers as Mr. Jonathan Roper. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's with SLBC, though. Um, yeah, so there should be okay. Adam, Adam McBride. That's right. Let's you want start Mr. with McBride him. to present first. Absolutely. Okay, Mr. McBride, are you here? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Okay, um, Mr. McBride. Uh, let's see. Do I see you? Where are you? Okay. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth before this committee today? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so state your name, the organization you represent, and the address, sir, and then you may proceed to speak. Uh, my name is Adam McBride, uh, Executive Director of Veterans Community Project, St. Louis. Uh, our property address is located at 1515 North Grand Boulevard, St. Louis, Missouri, 63106. Go ahead. You want to talk about the project? 
Yes, sir. I've, I've just got a, a brief prepared remarks here. Uh, first, I want to say thank you to the uh, Mr. Chair, uh, members of the committee. I also want to say thank you to uh, our sponsoring all the persons, uh, Alderman Davis, Evans, and Alderman Todd, um, for all their help and guidance along the way. Uh, I want to thank you for your consideration this morning of Veterans Community Projects Plan Unit Development. It's contained in Board Bill 28. Um, with the approval of this PUD, VCP St. Louis gets another step closer to redefining what veteran services look like in the St. Louis metropolitan area by developing three and a half acres in the Jeff Vanderloo neighborhood to serve those who bravely served us. This location is perfect for a VCP campus with its close proximity to Cochrane VA Medical Center, public transportation, and shopping for life's basic needs. VCP refuses to let any veteran fall through the cracks from providing transitional housing to offering walk-in support services. We are here for everyone who took the oath to serve us and this great nation. All veterans qualify for services from VCP, regardless of service duration or discharge status. VCP Village is a specialized community of 50 tiny homes <clears throat> with on-site wraparound support services designed to equip veterans with the tools needed to return to a stable, prosperous, and independent life. Each tiny house provides everything a veteran needs to live with dignity and security. New furniture, appliances, housewares, bedding, personal items, and utilities, all free of charge. The homes offer sanctuary and the emotional space needed for each veteran and BCP specially trained case management team to thoroughly address the underlying causes of his or her homelessness. Located on Grand Avenue, the Veterans Outreach Center will be an invaluable resource for any veteran requiring support services, such as utility assistance, emergency rent assistance, food and hygiene kits, employment supports, military documentation, benefits navigation, and walking case management. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd be happy uh, at your, uh, your discretion to answer any questions, to turn it back over to you, and uh, I'll be here for whatever you need. Thank you, Mr. McBride. Um, Alderwoman Davis, um, okay. do you want to add anything or you want me to just go ahead and allow the committee to take questions, ask questions? Mr. Chairman, I think that that presentation was very thorough. And uh, we should open it up for questions. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Um, Alderman Cohn. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, you know, I actually, uh, Mr. McBride had reached out several times to schedule tours. I apologize that my schedule did not allow me the opportunity to do so. Um, you know, it certainly seems like a very worthwhile project and, uh, you know, appreciate the efforts to provide housing to our uh, veterans. So uh, thank you very much for your time and effort doing so. All right, next is Alderman Kotar. Uh, no questions, Mr. Chairman. Um, Adam, I appreciate all your outreach that you've done and for the opportunity to visit the site a month or so ago. Very much looking forward um, to this uh, project moving forward. And if it's all right with the Alderwoman from the, uh, from the 19th, I'd like to be added as a co-sponsor. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, Madam Clerk, please make note of that. Uh, next is Alderman Pam Boyd. Uh, I have no questions. Uh, I can speak from experience because I did take advantage of the invite and it was a mind blower for me because what they don't give themselves justice. So what they show on pictures, if you haven't actually been there you would just be blown away. And so I'm excited to see the transformation that's gonna happen to that area. And I think it's gonna be an uplift for the residents that live over there. And I think what people don't realize, the residents are now policing that area to make sure yeah. that nothing happens to what they have. So when you have projects of development and residents are involved, and they support it and they make sure that they're protected, 
that's a good thing. So I'll, I'll vote for this 100%. And I'm telling you, if you haven't been there, it's a mind blower. It's not what you're thinking when you get on that lot. So thank you very much, Adam. All of Muhammad. Hey, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I have no questions. I'm in full support of this. Adam, I owe you a visit and I will make that up to you this week, I promise. And I can't wait to see all the things that you are doing. Uh, if it is okay with the sponsor, Mr. Chairman, I would like to be added as a co-sponsor to this legislation. Yes. Um, Alder Muhammad, I'm not sure if you were uh, present when I was asking that all committee members and anyone who's speaking um, show their video. Um, so um, with that, Alder Woman Mark. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I also echo my colleagues again. Um, thank you, Adam, for reaching out and all of the information and being very thorough. Um, I also hope to uh, make a visit and take a tour. And I also would like to be added as this co-sponsor, please. Thank you. Madam Clerk, please make note of that. Alderman Narayan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, and thank you to, uh, to Adam McBride. I, took uh, the opportunity that, that he gave to, uh, to tour the, uh, the, the tiny home in the area there. I think this is an amazing project. I would love to see more things like this uh, here in the city. And I would encourage everyone to act with some, some urgency on this. Uh, from what I understand, if, if we can uh, push this thing through, we may be able to break ground on it by September, which would get, you know, 50, uh, ho hopefully get 50, homeless vets off the street before it got bitter cold this year. So if we move with some urgency, hopefully we can, uh, uh, you know, help serve those who have, who have served us. Um, and thank you to the sponsors of this. And I've already asked the uh, clerk to be added as a co-sponsor. Uh, and okay. this is a great project. I'd love to see more of this. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, Alwama Evans. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I am just excited and elated to have this project, to be a part of this project. And I have no questions. I just have a comment and I am anxious for this to get underway. And uh, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. McBride, for your uh, presentation and for what you're bringing to our wards. Thank you. Uh, Adam, as you can hear, everybody seems to be excited about this project. Um, I'm certainly excited. As someone who have uh, served over 23 years with the Army, um, I, I definitely want to be a co-sponsor. Um, I had a chance to do the tour. I might have missed it in your presentation, but when do you actually, quote unquote, break ground, start the infrastructure improvements? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, our hope, uh, once we get... Uh, through the, the process at the city, it, it appears that we uh, potentially could be in line to, to apply for all the, the permits by September 2nd. And so as long as the process runs sort of on, on schedule, um, uh, that we could be looking um, early to, to mid-September uh, for an actual groundbreaking and get site utility work um, underway. Good. Again, exciting. I see some of my other colleagues. Let me ask, uh, just going to order by Sam. Alderwoman from the 26th, uh, any questions or comments? No, no questions or comments. Thank you. Okay. Alderman Gunther? No comments. Thank you very much. Uh, Alderman Page? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I will state that I have been excited about this project from the time that I first uh, heard about it. Uh, I thoroughly support the concept and the implementation. I look forward to an opportunity to take a, a tour of the uh, construction site at the earliest opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You're welcome. I'll also, may I add oh. that I'd like to be added as a co-sponsor. Okay, Madam Clerk, please make note of that. Uh, Alderwoman Navarro. Okay, Alderwoman Peel. I 
have no questions. Thank you. Okay, Alderman Howard. Just wanted to mention this is a great project. So. Um, no questions. It's a wonderful project, and I'd like to also be added as a co-sponsor. Okay. Alderman Ingracia. No questions, just congratulations and thanks for uh, bringing this project to the city. I think it's incredibly valuable. I'm looking forward to seeing how well it works to be used as a model, hopefully in other places in the city. Well, I think we have gone through the speakers. We've gone through the aldermen. I'll entertain a motion on um, Fourth Bill 28. Mr. Chairman, I move that we adopt board bill number 28. Second. 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 Okay, it's been moved and second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Alderwoman Davis. Aye. Alderman Cohn. Aye. Alderman Coder. Aye. Alderwoman Boyd. Aye. Alderman Muhammad. Alderman Martin. Aye. Alderman Ryan. Aye. Alderman Evans. Aye. Chairman Boyd. Aye. Alderman Muhammad. Eight aye votes. Okay, by your vote, you have passed board bill 28 out of committee with a due pass recommendation. Okay, now back before us is board bill number 51, sponsored by Alderman Bosley. Okay, Mark, right there. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, can, can we start with the presentation right from Rob Orr? Yeah. Sure. Rob, are you there? I am. Um, bear with me. I haven't done this before. Let's see how this goes. You all see what I'm sharing? Mm -hmm. Trying to make this bigger. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Thank you, Alderman Bosley and Alderman Page for co-sponsoring this uh, board bill 51. Uh, the purpose of this board bill would establish the general uh, geospatial protection and enhancement special use district, uh, hereafter abbreviated GPE SUD, uh, for approximately a 950 acre site surrounding and within 2,500 feet of the perimeter of the next NGA West campus, which as you know, is located at the Northeast corner of Jeff Jefferson and Cass Avenue. The special use district overlay zoning district as permitted in the enabling ordinance 66941 would prohibit certain uses that would otherwise be allowed in the underlying zoning districts A through K. The GPE SUD overlay zoning district would prohibit certain uses that would, if allowed to exist within the proposed GPE SUD area, impede communications, endanger NGA operations, and pose a threat to the NGA's mission. Um, so the GPE SUD is hereby created as an overlay zoning district. Uh, for the purpose of responding to the well-defined encroachment challenges that pose potential health, safety, and security issues to the NGA, thereby threatening national security and the general welfare of the state of Missouri and the city of St. Louis, both before and after the NGA relocates to the SUD area in approximately 2024. To reflect the specific character within the specific zoning district, um, and also notwithstanding section 26.73.010, E of the code to modify the zoning designation within its boundary, which includes land uses with health, safety, and general welfare issues that are necessary to be addressed in protecting the NGA um, and operational requirements. 
So uh, just a, a brief uh, look back, um, commitments made that were successful in uh, keeping the NGA located in St. Louis. Uh, we committed to deliver the site from one owner, uh, a consolidated single parcel, environmentally clean, all the buildings and streets, alleys and utilities removed and relocated. Uh, we all additionally uh, 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 committed to improving the infrastructure uh, in the North St. Louis uh, campus area. This includes North Jefferson Avenue, which is currently under design from market to uh, natural bridge. Uh, and that bid will be let later this uh, year, I believe. Uh, also, there's a full interchange under construction at I-64 in Jefferson and associated city streets uh, related to that project. Uh, that's fully funded and it is also in design uh, and there's actually the interchange piece itself is under construction already. That's a MoDOT project. We are looking for funding to improve Cass Avenue basically from the uh, exit of I-70 uh, all the way to uh, Grand Avenue. And that's something that we're continuing to work on. But we also committed to improving the neighborhood around the new NGA site, eliminating blight, uh, improving safety and security, and providing better residential, commercial, and retail opportunities. And so that's the purpose of what this uh, SUD is, is hoping to accomplish. Um, this is a half mile radius from the NGA. It's approximately 958 acres. The um, two major points I think that, that we need to address, um, the proposed legislation only regulates commercial land use in the area. It has no impact on residential, uh, residential zone properties. It does not have any impact on property taxes. It, this is not an effort in any way to acquire additional land outside of the NGA footprint. So this has nothing to do with uh, any of those activities. It's simply to uh, help protect the NGA and its mission. And the SUD does not impact any lawful uh, currently operating business. Um, so some of the prohibited uses, sorry, I'm struggling with my computer a little bit. Um, Gas stations would be prohibited, utility stations or towers, uh, towers taller than 65 feet, radio frequency, microwave radiated frequency and other emitting towers and facilities, improvements or structures taller than 65 feet, uh, facilities, improvements or structures for the transmission or receipt of information and signals by or through electronic radio satellite and other medium taller than 65 feet. Facilities, improvements, or structures finance sponsored, owned or operated in whole or in part by foreign governments, which pose a threat to national security on the NGA site. Light industrial and commercial uses or activities that introduce, involve, manufacture, or produce hazardous or toxic substances that by their nature are considered toxic or hazardous to human health are present in large quantities and require seven day a week, 24 hour a day security with controlled access limited to employees and authorized visitors. Additionally, it would prohibit light industrial and manufacturing uses involving welding activities during an industrial manufacturing or fabrication process, including but not limited to automobile and machinery manufacturing, fabrication of metal products and electrical equipment and metal service centers. This uh, prohibition shall not be construed to prohibit welding activities involving metal, sculptural art, the maintenance of industrial machinery in the construction or expansion of buildings. Uh, also prohibited would be power substations and facilities for the production and or transmission of electrical power in commercial quantities of at least one megawatt. Uh, this prohibition shall not be construed to prohibit power substations that exclusively provide power to an on-site industrial manufacturing or commercial use. And uh, lastly, the um, prohibition would apply to electromagnetic spectrum and signals uses and activities that are not in full compliance with FCC um, 47 CFR part 15 and or part 18 requirements for radio frequency devices and industrial scientific and medical equipment as applicable users conducting 47 CFR part 15 and or part 18 compliant uses and activities must self certify in writing that such uses and activities are in full compliance. Such certification notwithstanding uses and activities under the subsection may be subject to FCC inspection and review as authorized or required by FCC regulation. And that's the end of my presentation. I, I uh, will turn this back over to uh, Alderman Bosley. Again, thank you for your time. I will say that uh, when it gets to questions, also on this call, I believe if they're still here, 
uh, Frank Cooper, who is with the NGA uh, Deputy Program Director for Construction and Security. Uh, Mark Johnson, who is with Civitas, who's been a consultant uh, that helped uh, SLDC and the city uh, significantly as we sought to retain the NGA in St. Louis. Um, and he's, uh, his company was also instrumental in helping create Project Connect. And then Cecilia Dvorak from the City Planning uh, and Urban Design Agency. So with that, I'll uh, turn it back over to Alderman Bosley and thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so as you see, Board Bill 51 is um, is an overlay. Can I be heard very well? Mm -hmm. Okay. Board Bill 51 is an overlay. Uh, it does not specifically have to reach as far as it is. It is a half a mile, but the NGA does not require that. So I want us to be very clear in what um, is required specifically from the NGA when we speak about this, because there is a little bit misinformation that can come. Um, and we want everybody to be uh, as informed as possible because we do have a lot of people that live in the area that do feel um, that this can be harmful to them, uh, even though uh, there were some things in the last one that we all disagree with, uh, which is why we pulled the last side. Um, this time, I don't wanna make uh, any of those mistakes. I'd like no stone uh, to be left unturned as far as the transparency goes, uh, therefore, once again, that um, uh, misinformation that could be out there present itself at you know any given time. We want to make sure that our folks are equipped with the right information to be able to uh, talk to those individuals who were not able to make this meeting. Um, that also uh, will not be able to make the uh, uh, upcoming community meeting about this also. So I do want to also add um, that there were some. Uh, miscommunications, I believe, between the office and the residents here. They were supposed to receive a postcard, and this is not on you, Mr. Rob, or I just wanna just making sure that there's some transparency between uh, uh, this bill has what has conspired over the last week or so with the residents, uh, so we can all catch up and, and move forward there. Um, so everyone that is on the call here from the third ward uh, and those in the fifth, um, if you are registered voters, um, and have voted within the last, uh, I think it was the last presidential election, last few elections, uh, you were supposed to receive a postcard that um, told you about the SUD before this uh, was introduced. That postcard also had a date on it uh, for Zoom uh, to discuss this particular bill prior to uh, this date also. But uh, came to my attention uh, the day of that, Zoom call that a lot of our residents did not get the postcard until uh, maybe a day before. Some of them hadn't received it until a day before that Zoom call. So um, that is where a little bit of this uh, lack of transparency is, where some of the resistance comes from. Um, they want to be respected by this office. We also de demand those things. And this is not on this administration. This is uh, prior. So I don't I want to make sure that that's clear also. Uh, we did sit down with SLDC and ask them to send out postcards in a timely fashion so that people were not uh, blindsided or felt that they were being blindsided by this bill. It is 15 pages. That's a lot to read, especially, um, you know, for folks that are working every day. And uh, uh, yeah, this, this is a lot to dissect if you're not looking at this type of information regularly. So um, that was an effort that was made also for those who see those uh, Post, not posted those posted uh, board bills out there on the different blocks that they are around. Those are also requirements to uh, the zoning uh, to let everybody know that there's a zoning changes, uh, zoning change coming. Uh, I want uh, our residents to know I went through this bill thoroughly. Um, there's nothing in here harmful. There's not one way uh, that anybody's home can be uh, taken by this legislation. I am not willing to or will be um, co-signing or, or, or voting for or with any legislation that removes people from their homes during my tenure here. So that is, um, you know, if anybody has seen any information, if that is uh, something that uh, folks are thinking that could be harmful in this, there's absolutely nothing there. Once again, I just want to make 
um, the transparency and the way that the communication should have been brought transparent, uh, that this was supposed to be much more uh, smoother for us in, in, in communication. So, you know, I would definitely take, uh, because I involved him in the bun end of the stick there, that, that should have been done much, much better. Um, so we will do what's necessary and needed to make sure that um, the Lost Look, looks like I cut off in my back. Hello. Okay. There you go. Sorry about that. Yeah, I, I was saying I, I will I will do what I uh, need to to ensure that my residents and residents that are on the call, uh, if you'd like to have a one-on-one -on -one about this board bill, if you want to have a community meeting there um, on your block about it, just wherever we need to do to ensure that there is transparency there and you get um, what it is that you need out of the board bill as far as the information that makes you feel comfortable with it. I will make sure that we do that. Just as before, I have not shoved anything down our resident's throat. This is also not intended to be that way or will not happen that way. So we will make sure that there is some uh, you know, transparency here and there's information that uh, whatever information is needed to be answered is answered. Um, so you saw the prohibited uses the last time we talked about this. So uh, there were many, many more non-traditional uses there. Uh, like tattoo parlors, they did not want certain type of uh, uh, businesses that we would generally have in our communities. And a lot of people felt like that uh, was something that would hurt us business-wise. And I also agree with that. So those things are completely removed. There's nothing there uh, as far as uh, uh, regular uses right now. Everybody is grandfathered in. Uh, once again, there are no residential uh, impacts directly. Now I do want to say there can be some, some impacts um, to, to taxes period along this area once upgrades start happening. You know, whenever there's a zone laid out and people wanna specifically put money within that zone, if they wanna do street upgrades, sidewalks, and we start to aesthetically make that part of the, the, the zone look much better, you know, that will, um, the, the, I think that will ripple at some point in time and taxes will go up. That, that is a part of um, uh, what happens when development comes, but that's not, in any, this is not in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Physically, the board bill uh, raising your taxes. It is not raising any taxes. I live here too. I'm not looking for any substantial raises that um, I cannot afford either. So I'm making sure that our taxes, we, we do have some things that we're working on to put us in a position as a community, which is outside of this board bill, uh, to, to try to keep our taxes low as development comes. But you know, this isn't that particular legislation. This is simply just an overlay. Uh, to provide the NGA with the things that they need uh, for security purposes. Uh, so with that, I'm sure we have some more speakers. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'm not sure how you like to go about. Um, sure. Right. Um, I'm going to ask um, Alderman Page. He's a co-sponsor if he wanted to add anything before we go to the committee members. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I completely and wholeheartedly uh, concur with the comments just offered by the alderman from the third, um, my next door neighbor. Uh, I will say that uh, on this iteration of board bill 51, the, uh, the SUD, uh, I started by doing some research. I had uh, SLDC to present to me in great detail uh, the features of the SUD to make sure that I, I wanted to make sure that I thoroughly understood it for the benefit of my constituents, as well as constituents of the third ward. Uh, I came away um, just like uh, the alderman from the third indicated, uh, feeling no harm, whatever. Uh, I've also begun uh, sharing information about the SUD with uh, developers that I've met with to make sure that what I understood was shared with people in the community. Uh, so with that, uh, I am in full support of Board Bill 51, obviously as a co-sponsor. And uh, I think that's it for the moment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, Alderman Davis, any questions of the sponsors? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't have any questions. I've been following this very closely and have had the opportunity to be a part of a project, or actually two projects like this in other parts of the country. 
So I do understand it. I think this is very comprehensive. And uh, just to, to give note for those residents who are concerned about tax increase, it would be at least five to seven years before you really see any kind of increase because it's gonna take that long to really change uh, the footprint there with uh, additional development uh, for the future. So I'm excited about it. I thank you for going back uh, and uh, redoing this because there was some concern. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome, Alderman Cohn. Alderman Cohn. Okay, we'll come back. Alderman Kotar. Uh, no questions about the SUD, Chairman. I know there's, I think, some folks, maybe the construction manager from NGA. Are we going to get maybe just a brief update on sort of status of construction, how things are moving along while he's here? Is that something we could do? Uh, would that be Mr. Cooper? I believe so. Okay, he's he'll have a chance to present. Okay, thank you. Nothing further. Okay. Um, Automan Pam Boyd. I don't have questions. I just have a comment uh, to my colleagues. I congratulate you because uh, you all are sending a message that a lot of us as older people have been doing is educating the community. And so that's the positive part. And so I, I really like that when you offer to say, we can sit down at the coffee table, we can sit down in a group setting, we can sit down at a whole meeting to educate you on the processes and how it will impact you. And I think once we continue to do those kind of things, you don't get a lot of issues because people know that they're welcome at the table. So thank you, Alderman Page, and thank you, Alderman Bosley. Uh, I'm glad that you are moving forward and you have educated your community. Thank you. Thank you. And I, just for clarification, we, we're getting them right. They still feel a little bit like we, we missed the marks. So I want to make sure I'm you know, clearing that. I appreciate that, Alder one. Yeah, and that's the, that's the best part, you hearing them. And so a lot of times, residents feel they, we don't listen to them. So that's good. Thank you. Alderman Muhammad. Alderman Muhammad. Alderman Mark, Alderman Mark, I'm sorry. No questions, thank you. Okay, Alderman Narayan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just, just one question, just to be um, clear. Uh, so this has no impact on residential properties or on current businesses inside this area? Not current. Um, businesses that are licensed correctly. Um, let's say for instance, uh, as a hypothetical, if you are licensed to work on cars, um, can, can I be heard? You look frozen. Yes, yes. we can hear you. Okay, uh, but let's say for instance, uh, you're licensed to work on cars. We have an automobile shop there and they do light welding, um, but they don't put on there that they also in the spare time build uh, ATVs or they build um, you know, they manufacture, uh, you know, mini cars or something like that. If, you know, they did not have that specific use down and they went and applied for a license um, to do that particular work, if it was outside of what was within these prohibited uses, then they would not be able to do that based on them not already having a license to do it currently before this, um, this board bill, I mean, this judge sits in. So, and I but, do believe that they may, well, it actually is prohibited, so I'm sorry. But if, if, so if, if, if anything a, that within, I'm sorry, go ahead. If, if I'm a homeowner and I, uh, uh, to use your example, uh, and I build uh, four wheelers in my spare time, the, I, I'm gonna, I'm not going to be subject to this statute uh, because it's a residential property. Sorry, phone disappeared and came back. That signal thing. Repeat it, please. I apologize. <laughs> sure, sure. No, I'll, I'll repeat. Um, 
So if, if I'm a residential property owner and I, I tinker with four wheelers in my spare time, though, uh, I'm not going to be subject to this, this ordinance because it's my home. Right. Well, and, and, and less of it, not necessarily, well, of course it's, it's your home, but it's, it's more of a, you know, that's light, very, very light, um, you know, welding. That's not anything that you'd be doing for 20 hours a day at a certain frequency that would cause disruptions with the, the, the technologies that they utilize. And that's, that's all they are worried about is ensuring that any large manufacturer or light manufacturer, somebody that is utilizing, uh, doing welding, for a long period of time or you know any type of wireless um, uh, uh, connections that they utilize that can be affected by those uh, machines. They wanna make sure that that is uh, on paper. They know where those disruptions could be coming from um, and when this should is overlaid that there won't be any more to worry about. Okay. If that makes and then, sense. It, absolutely. And uh, who, who's in charge for kind of policing this? Um, I, I think once we put it in an ordinance, it'd be up to us. Uh, it'd be going through the building division, just like they look at anything else uh, as far as what would be prohibited for the public service. If a use came through and somebody wanted to build a, a 70 foot tower for, um, uh, let's say a wireless provider that would pop up as a permit um, and they'd immediately probably be denied based on this being in a prohibited area. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Thank you so much. No problem, thank you. Autowoman Evans. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> I have no questions at this time. Uh, some of them have been answered through the questions of the uh, previous older people. And I just uh, appreciate you, Brandon Bosley, for uh, doing the work that you do. I know when you uh, attack or research an item, you do it somewhat thoroughly. And I thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you, I appreciate it. Okay, um, I have some questions, but I'm gonna wait until I hear from um, the people who signed up. So there's a couple of people signed up, Mr. Frank Cooper and Mr. Mark Johnson. So we'll go with Mr. Frank Cooper first. Okay. Mr. Cooper, um, do you swear or affirm that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth before this committee? Uh, yes, sir, I do. Okay. If you're representing yourself as an individual, please state your name and your address. If you represent a business, please state your name, the business, and the business address. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Sure will. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is uh, Frank Cooper. I'm representing the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. I'm sitting at 3200 South 2nd Street, St. Louis, Missouri, 63118. Uh, as stated earlier, my current position within the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, I am serving as the N2W Deputy Program Director with responsibilities focused on construction and security of the facility. Mr. Cooper, uh, I thought I could see you earlier. What happened to your video? Sir, you, uh, if you saw me, you're, you got magic on your end because oh. in our facility here, we're, we're not, oh. uh, we do not have cameras on our computers. Okay. So if, you saw me, I'm, <laughs> if, you're, if you saw me, I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mistook you for somebody else that said it. must have been Mr. Johnson I saw. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman and committee members, um, and especially Admiral Bosley and our uh, Alder, Alder woman, Alderman Bosley and Alderman Page, uh, if I can speak correctly. Thank you for uh, uh, hosting this event today and allowing uh, NGA to have an opportunity to, uh, to speak here. And uh, so again, what I'd like to do, sir, uh, with your permission is give a quick construction update since that was asked and I'll circle back to, this, to the SUD because there may be some questions there. Uh, sure. from, a, from a construction standpoint, the site is progressing. Uh, we are still planning to deploy our workforce from the, the Second Street location in 2025. Uh, if you're out in the neighborhood cruising around, you'll see uh, steel, go steel being erected. So the structured parking garages, both uh, uh, on the east and west side of the facility, are going up uh, pretty rapidly. Uh, the main operations building is right in the center. That's where you'll see the majority of the steel 
the lower level uh, slab on grade activity is almost complete. They've already started pouring uh, the the upper uh, the lower level of uh, level one slab. Uh, so we are progressing. You'll see two large cranes in the area. There's a couple of smaller cranes so supporting all the uh, steel erection activity. Uh, currently, we have about 350 to possibly 400 construction workers on site. For those of you who don't know, McCarthy is the prime contractor. It's a joint venture with McCarthy Hit, Hits being out of Virginia. But McCarthy is there on the property uh, in full force. Uh, we also we share a facility out there with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, that's us in NGA. Um, uh, so we are uh, out there all the time. We're, uh, they're working like six days a week, uh, occasionally on Sunday, depending on the weather. But lots of good activity. Uh, really appreciate the support and the uh, encouragement uh, from all the uh, co committee members today. I uh, just want to share with you some outreach that we're doing. On June 24th, there was an open house sponsored by uh, Project Connect. The uh, SLDC uh, was aware of this, as well as uh, the U.S. Army Corps was also a co-sponsor, and NGA participated. Uh, we had uh, several members. It goes out to all the local neighborhoods, and we did have several members show up and participate and ask questions. Uh, we have everything there from NGA police to NGA uh, recruiters, um, uh, the Corps there, McCarthy's there. So, again, just a nice way to outreach to the community to kind of give them an update and uh, show them what's going on. We'll continue to do those. I think they're trying to do them quarterly as the site progresses. Um, one other note based off the other gentleman's question within the SUD. Uh, when there are, if, if one of the things that we've added to the SU, SUD working with the SLDC is we've added a, a sentence in there. If someone does submit a permit and the city, you know, zoning commission has a question, they can reach out to the technical experts of NGA and we can assist and advise them on that particular question or permit. So we're all kind of operating on the same page. So that's just to give you an example of how the SUD has evolved based off really good cooperation between the SLDC and NGA. Um, the other thing that I, I, want to, I want to clarify something that um, Alderman Bosley stated earlier. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page here. So the 2,500 feet uh, buffer zone has been a requirement for NGA for several years now. We've been consistent with that. And again, that is, as y'all stated, that is to help our protect our mission. You know, our mission, as you well know, is to support the military servicemen and women worldwide. It's there that we're there to support our uh, senior policymakers, whether they're sitting in the Pentagon or in the White House. So we have a very significant national security mission. So when we evaluated what we needed to have in place to operate in an urban environment, a lot of research went into defining that 2,500 feet and defining what those prohibited clauses are within the SUD. So again, a lot, of ha a lot has happened over the last couple of years. This SUD has evolved to this point. So I really appreciate what's happened so far. And I will, sir, I'm available to answer any questions or take questions if need be. Over to you, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, we're gonna go ahead and take the next speaker and then we'll come back to my colleagues to ask questions of the guest speakers. So next up is Mr. Mark Johnson. Good morning. Uh, Mr. Johnson, thank you. <laughs> I just got a blank out there. Um, you promised to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so again, if you're speaking as an individual, state your name, uh, where you live. If you're speaking on behalf of organizations, state your name, uh, who you're with, and the address. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Mark Johnson. I'm the president of a company called Civitas, located at 1200 Bannock Street, Denver, Colorado, 80204. We have been, my team has been supporting uh, the SLDC and originally in pursuit 
of, of the NGA to try and keep the NGA in the city of St. Louis. Uh, initially, our effort was helping uh, various departments within the city, including the SLDC and PDA, uh, regarding <clears throat> the project requirements to attract uh, and retain the NGA within the city. Once the Army Corps made the decision to select this site, uh, we worked with the Army Corps and with the NGA in many, many meetings to help understand and interpret those project requirements, including uh, the 2,500 feet, which was really determined between the NGA and the Army Corps and uh, these other prohibited uses. We participated in the prior version of the SUD uh, and just, uh, I'd just like to repeat for everyone on the, on the call that uh, we have greatly simplified the SUD since the prior version to remove the reference to conditional uses to ensure that this SUD has no impact on residential uses, homeowners and, and renters, uh, and to limit the impact of this just to the very specific uses which <clears throat> the Army Corps and the NGA believe could potentially pose a threat. So I'm available for questions after that, but that's all I really need to say. Thank you. Okay, let's go around and uh, ask questions of the speakers. Alderwoman Davis. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have uh, no specific questions, and uh, I wanted to say hi to Mark because uh, he's helped us in the city for many years, coming back and forth with different projects. and what he's best known for nationally in working with protecting communities and residents uh, is his Denver projects. So um, I'm looking forward to us moving in the direction of having more community understanding and education. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Alderman Cohn. No questions, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate the updates on uh, construction the site and, and the site. Okay. Alderman Pam Boyd. No questions. Thank you. Alderman Muhammad. Alderman Mark. No questions. I appreciate the information. Yes. Alderman Narayan. No questions. Thank you. Alderman Evans. No questions at this time. Thank you. Okay, I have a few questions. Is um, Mary Hart Burton from zoning on? Yes, sir. I saw her earlier. Mary, just to make sure we're, we're doing everything right. I know when we do SUDs and different zoning changes, it's imperative that notices go out in a timely manner and bills are heard only after that period of time. Are we in compliance with the notices? Because it sounds like Alderman Bozzi has some concerns about notifications. We have posted and noticed the board bill for the HUDS committee hearing by the requirements of the zoning code. I don't think that was the notification that Alderman Bosley was for referring to. I think he might have been talking about an additional mailing that SLDC staff did to the residents. Okay. All right, cool. So check that out. Chairman, I can address that if, if you please. Go ahead, Rob. Yeah, thanks. So at uh, Alderman Bosley's request, we did send out postcards to every voter in the mayoral election this year within an additional 500 feet beyond the SUD area. So the, the 2,500 feet plus an additional 500 feet. Um, those postcards were mailed or were at least supposed to have been mailed. They were hand delivered to the Postal Service on Saturday, a week before comments were requested. And we do know, as Mr. Bosley uh, pointed out, uh, a number of them were not received until very late that week. Well, we know some people got them on Thursday. I reached out to some individuals I know who live in that geography. Some of them got them on Thursday, some of them got them on Friday, and some of them maybe even got them the following week. Because of the number of people that uh, we felt like did not get an opportunity to, re uh, to respond timely by that Friday, which when, is when comments were requested, at, at Alderman Bosley's request, we did then have a Zoom meeting the following, I believe it was a Tuesday night, 
uh, and we did have a number of participants who uh, who showed up for that. So, um, you know, I, I don't think it's a, a secret that we're having problems with our postal service uh, here in the United States right now. And so, you know, I, I think that we did the best effort we could to get the notice out. But um, and we also, to be honest, we've had probably 50 to 75 of them that have come back as undeliverable, um, which seems odd because they just voted in an election. But at any rate, uh, so we feel like we did make some uh, at Alderman Bosley's request, uh, reach out, attempt to notify everyone of, of the SUD itself, uh, directed them to the website, told them about this meeting here today. And then subsequently, when we found out that some people weren't getting those postcards, we scheduled a public meeting and you know, put the word out as best we could on social media and by email to the neighborhood working group. So I hope that addresses that issue. Okay. Um, let me just ask about some of the um, prohibited uses. And I think it may have been covered, but when, when you talked about solar, not solar, you talked about power generation, Ameren wouldn't be impacted by any of this, would they? Rob? If, if you're asking me, no, I don't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Alderman. I, I thought Rob might know more of the technical stuff, but you can answer it. Uh, well, no, I, no, Ameren would not be impacted. No, sir. Oh, okay, what about solar? If somebody wanted to do a solar farm? No, sir. Well, if they wanted to do a solar farm within that particular area, uh, with, well, number one, I don't, I don't think it'd be possible within that well let me not say possible we have enough lots and land but it's all owned already by the developer paul mckee um, okay. i guess it's a hypothetical if he was to sell it to someone and was looking they wanted to build a solar farm it would not be it, it, it'd be prohibited within that zone based on how much electricity they would be uh providing but it says that if they were providing it for an institution specifically um then they'd be able to do so but if they were trying to build an entire power plant to power the whole neighborhood then no this would be prohibited okay. um i'm on page 15 of the board bill i'm gonna read something i thought kind of stuck out for me um this is section 8b it's and it's talking about non-conforming uses uh, B says, but if any existing business within the district does not have a valid occupancy permit held by the existing owner or operator and a valid business license from the city of St. Louis held by such owner or operator, such business and use must be discontinued within no more than 30 days from the date upon which the city issues notice of such unlawful occupancy or use. So is that basically saying that we know that there are businesses operating without proper life business licenses and occupancies and but it's going to really be elevated to monitor that once this SUD is put in place. Well, I, I don't think that it's stating that we know that businesses are what I think is saying if there are businesses there and we find out about them when this uh, is, is overlaid, then, you know, they'll be sent notices and have to discontinue. And of course, um, with the different things that are going on within the area, there'll be much more, uh, you know, people looking at the different businesses that operate and how they operate because of, um, you know, the the, the SUD itself. So, um, yeah, they they be impacted, um, not immediately, unless they were once again um, uh, trying to go get a permit uh, after the SUD. Then, then they definitely would have an immediate impact. So. Okay, that makes sense. Um, I don't know if this question is for you or Rob, but I ask you, you can punt. So, uh, as you as, as you as, as you stated, Alderman Bosley, there's you know been some confusion or people really kind of concerned, and I really appreciate you taking your time to walk through this process uh, on behalf of your constituents. That's very admirable, and so I just echo what Alderman Pam Boyd said. Um, one of the things that have been stirred up is um, NGA wants this, NGA wants this. And is there a document from NGA that spells out all the non-conforming businesses that cannot be within that half a mile footprint that can be shared? Um, okay. That is a, a question that I would think probably would be good for somebody in SLDC. Okay, Rob, can you take that? 
So I do believe that those commitments that we, we mentioned earlier were um, became a part of the, I forget exactly what the abbreviation is, but it was a land transfer and redevelopment uh, document that, that took place when the pr uh, property was sold to the NGA. Uh, I was not a party to, the, to, to negotiating that, and, and I don't know that I've actually ever seen that document. I don't know, Mark, uh, if, if you were a, a party to negotiating that and recall what might have been in that. Um, <clears throat> I was not part of negotiating it, but to my knowledge, there isn't. there was no search for uh, businesses that would pose a threat. Uh, we simply worked with the Army Corps and the NGA to help them understand land use within the general vicinity, uh, mobility issues, utility issues, and things like that, so that they would uh, be able to go through with their due diligence in their final decision about this site. And that then led to the parameters that are in the SU day today. Oh, okay, Mark, so let me ask you this then. Um, hey, Mr. Mr. Chairman, what, I can clarify that for you if you would like. This is Frank. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Frank Cooper. Sorry to, sorry to interrupt there, sir. That's uh, okay. So the, the, the actual document is the Land Development Remediation and Transfer Agreement that Rob was referring to. And if you, uh, if you guys, we have the sign, I have a digital signed copy of it in my records, but it, there is a section in there that discusses mission encroachment and the north side redevelopment plan. And it highlights in there about uh, incompatible land uses, including hazardous uses, incompatible height of structures, radio frequencies, and, and it continues. So there is a section in that document, which was signed in 2017. I'd have to look it up, but there is, that's where that information was first captured, then it was solidified as as has been stated from Mark through the SUD. Over. Awesome, Mr. Cooper, because I think that I remember back in 2017 when this was a real hot potato, and there was some fierce debate, and it was some ugly debate. Um, so, and I'm the kind of person I don't like rumors. I travel with facts, and so that would really help out. Um, because, of course, when this passes out of committee, it goes before the full board that we can actually have those facts. So can you email that document to um, uh, the, the clerk of the Board of Aldermen at BOA clerk at St. Louis dash mo dot gov? Uh, uh, yes, sir. Copy that. We'll take care of that. All right. Greatly appreciate it. I think that's very necessary. Um, let's see. I think I have any more questions. So it seems like Alderman Bozzi, um, you want to do more community engagement as well, right? Well, I, I think it looks like we got some residents that may want to speak. If, if, you know, if they want to, I, I don't, I don't see uh, on the four attendees list, but I do some folks say that they want to talk. Did anybody sign up to speak, sir? There's the only people I have, and, and the clerk can correct me if I'm wrong, the only people I have that can speak today is um, that's not staff of SLDC or planning is um, Mr. Frank Cooper and Mr. Mark Johnson. Uh, but what I welcome is an opportunity to have another meeting, you know, next week and, you know, really get people organized and engaged and, and see if they could sign up on a Zoom call. I think that would be very healthy for this discussion. Yeah, I, I, I like that. And I can get, you know, get my time, my residents a little bit more time to, to see if they can make a zone. I can, yeah, I, I like that. Okay, I, I cool. That. I saw Mary Hart Burton had a hand up earlier. Did, uh, Mary, did you have a question? Or no, comment? sir. I was, I was just going to confirm that Alderman uh, Bosley was correct when we were discussing that section of the ordinance earlier. Okay, I'm not okay. doing. Eric, Please forgive me, people, on, uh, on this iPad, it is not the same as dealing with a computer. So I'm trying to juggle around here and, and not miss certain things in a chat or miss a hand that may have raised. So I'm just trying to make sure I don't see hands raised there. Okay, I don't. Well, I think we've gone over um, all the speakers, um, maybe some colleagues that are not 
um, part of the committee may have a question. So let me do that and we'll wrap this up. Uh, Alderman Gunther. No questions. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, Alderwoman in Gracia. No questions. Thank you. Okay. Auto, no, 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 no. Auto woman Peel. No questions. Thank you. Okay. I don't think I see anybody else. Okay. With that, uh, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and hold um, board bill 51 in committee. We'll schedule a meeting for next week and have more discussion. So thank you. Next, we are going to board bill number two. Thank you. And and I'm going to ask if uh, the, the vice chair can take over for a few minutes for me. Alderman Kotar. Happy to, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so I'm going to step away for about five minutes. I'll be back, and if you can facilitate, I appreciate it. Certainly. All right, board bill number two um, is the, I, I haven't seen his president read on, his sponsor on. No, he, he will not be on today. This is basically a uh, public input. Okay, so we're going to hear public comment. Got it. Yeah. Comment. Okay. And I've got the list here. Uh, one second. Bear with me, folks. Okay, so uh, board bill number two, which I think we all know is the American Rescue Plan, uh, a spending proposal submitted, uh, sponsored by President Reed. Uh, we've got some speakers signed up today. I see three here on my list. A Ryan Pierce Hour speaking against, and then a Connie Crowley Collins speaking uh, with no position and a Carissa Gilman Hernandez with no position. Uh, we'll go ahead and start. I'm gonna read sort of our general rules and guidelines for taking public comment. Um, I'm gonna read these as, as our rules require and then we'll start there with, uh, with Mr. Auer. Um, okay, so. <clears throat> Uh, speakers will be called in the order they appear on the list, uh, which is the same order they register to speak. Each speaker will be given a set time by the chair to speak. We're allotting three minutes per speaker. Uh, each speaker will be called by name. Um, they're speaking on the topic about the bill. Uh, they can be given additional time at the discretion of the chair. And any written comments should be commit, submitted to the, uh, if, if anyone wishes to submit written comments, those go to our clerk, uh, Kennedy T at stlewis-mo.gov or BOA clerk at stlewis-mo.gov. And I believe I just put that email in the chat a few minutes ago. Um, so with that, we'll go ahead and start our speakers list. Uh, is Mr. Uh, Ryan Pierce Hour uh, on the line? Yes, I'm here. Okay, Mr. Me? Hour, if you wouldn't mind, go ahead. You, I've given your name, but if you give us your address and then go ahead, the floor is yours for three minutes. Yeah, my address is uh, 5949 uh, Scanlon Avenue, 63139. Okay. Okay. Right. Uh, thank you. Uh, members of the committee, uh, my name is Ryan. I'm currently a student at the University of Missouri St. Louis pursuing a master's in public policy administration with an emphasis in local government. Resident of the 10th Ward, as I've said, uh, line 19 of the American Rescue Plan Act uh, provides the follow following qualifications for funding. Um, whereas money is acquired under the COVID-19 fund can be used to respond to uh, COVID-19 or its neg negative economic impacts, including assistance to households, small businesses, nonprofits, or uh, aid to impacted industries such as tourism, travel, and hospitality. Though I agree with many of the fundings listed in Board Bill 2, I feel like this bill could provide funding for an effective method of enhancing tourism and hospitality. I would like for the members of the board, the president of the board, to consider allocating funds to enhancing various tourism and hospitable experiences on Washington Avenue downtown. Uh, Washington Avenue is a street that has received high acclaim among nationwide street critics and is arguably the sole anchor of commercial, cultural, and residential life in downtown St. Louis. Despite its accolades, the pandemic has once displayed, once again displayed its weak points. With reckless driving and street racing, these activities have, have transformed the street into a place of excessive noise and exacerbated delinquent behavior. Simultaneously, businesses suffered from the lack of alternative experiences they could provide for visitors. Outdoor dining was only provided by a few restaurants, and retail stores suffered from their limitations. Many businesses and restaurants closed or severely cut employment. 
As these problems persist, tourists and metro area residents learn from news outlets and social media that Washington Avenue has become another object of disappointment, disappointment within St. Louis City. When visitors could stay and explore local businesses on Washington Avenue, and they are now prone to leave the area after they've seen reports of lesser conditions they could experience on Washington Avenue. This area contains many high tier attractions such as America Center, City Museum, Downtown YMCA, and many beloved restaurants placed among the area. It is also a moderate walk from the arch. Uh, using street blockades to shrink streets was a, method, a means to reduce street racing, yet these are temporary measures. Uh, using these measures contain repetitive man hours and material costs that can be used more efficiently. Uh, the shrinking methods are visually unappealing for visitors. With the street transformed into a pedestrian-centric zone, businesses among Washington Avenue may have prevailed among the pandemic's difficulties. Consumers would have greater protections from viral transmissions using large open outdoor markets and large dining areas for restaurants. Street racing and other harmful activities would be removed. Um, couple sources. Um, Bloomberg City Lab uh, performed a survey of 43 member cities that implemented open street initiatives. Uh, Valencia Avenue in San Francisco saw 18% more consumer interest on car-free days compared to the start of the pandemic. Uh, Washington University also performed a review of 47 open street initiatives in 2011. Uh, within this study, they found that 68% of open street participants became aware of a store or restaurant that was new to them. 73% uh, of participants uh, spent money at a restaurant or store on the open streets route. Mr. Hour, if you could wrap it up in the next 20 seconds or so. Yeah. All right. Uh, creating and executing a plan to make a no vehicle zone within Washington Avenue would create a unique tourist experience within our downtown area that can thrive in and out of troubling times in the current pandemic. I uh, want I ask the board members uh, to consider um, allocating funds to uh, ex execute an effective means to enhancing tourist and visitor experiences on Washington Avenue. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate your comments. Yep. Okay. Um, all right. Next on our speaker list, where did I put that? Second. Uh, next, we have uh, Connie Crowley Collins. Um, Ms. Collins, are you are you on? I, I saw you earlier. Yes, sir. I'm on. Okay, go ahead. The floor is yours. You've got about three minutes. Okay. Okay. My name is Connie Crawley. And I just want to say I'm at SEIU. The address is 5565 Persian Avenue, St. Louis, Missouri, 63112. Hello, and thank you for this the opportunity to speak to the committee. My name is Connie Crawley Collins. I live and work in the city of St. Louis. I work at Alara Caring as a home care provider. I've been th there for seven years. I'm also the senior shop steward at my facility. So I act as the voice for my coworkers. I want to start by, by sharing what is what has been to do this work over the past, over the last year. As COVID-19 ripped through our city stating in March, starting in March of 2020, Healthcare workers were put at a turn. Is that me or do we lose Miss Collins? I think we lost her. Okay. She froze up. These are some of the workers that I unite in my union with. Miss Collins, we sorry. Yeah. Uh, this won't count against your time. You froze there for a second. If you could go back about 30 seconds and, uh, okay. and, and, and help us out. I'm, I'm sorry. We lost you when you were telling us about how you're the shop steward. Okay. Um, I, I said I was, I would work for Alara, caring as home care provider. I've been there for seven years. I'm also the senior shop steward at my facility. So I act as the voice for my coworkers. I want to start by sharing what it's been like to do this work over the past seven years. As COVID-19 ripped through our city stating, it started in March of 2020, healthcare workers were put to terrible risk. Our SEIU members are the front line the cooks, the housekeepers, the technicians, the certified nurse assistants, the laundry aides, the cleaning staff, and just as important, home care workers who work directly in their clients' home. There are the workers that I unite in my union with. Many of us in these jobs are people of color, black, brown people, 
are almost three times more likely to be from COVID-19, according to the CDC. We have been risking ourselves and our loved ones to care for our clients, but many of us only earn the state minimum wage of $10.30. An hour, which is just enough, which just isn't enough. And even though OSHA was working on behalf on half speed, a few of our facilities were even closed by OSHA because of the unsafe working environments or conditions. We have been risking our lives to save others. Many of us gotten COVID, even myself. I suffered a lost time and was not paid. We lost some of our coworkers, loved ones. God rest the souls. The COVID-19 pandemic has shed light on many, of cracks, many cracks in the healthcare system. We absolutely cannot allow businesses as usual to continue after that. We are supporting the following, the Stimulus Advisory Board and the Mayor, and Mayor Jones Direct Relief Package recommendations for funding healthcare, including 1.5 billion for direct support care workers. These home care workers also need to have access to unions and their employees need practice and union nutrition. Uh, Vaccine reach outreach workers and education efforts about the vaccine, additional support for low wages workers, as outlined in the mayor's package, such as health care, mental health care, mental health services, affordable housing, and children's services. And we would like to see a worker support officer added. Health care workers desperately need a worker support officer who can hear workers compliant to hold public hearings and fix unsafe working conditions for health care. Thank Ms. you very much. If you could wrap it up in the next 20 seconds or so. Oh, I'm finished. I just thank ended you. it, sir. Thank oh, you. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Ms. Collins, for your comments. Um, and I, I, I earlier, I, I accidentally left someone off. I also see an Ann Crenshaw is uh, asked to speak by phone. So we'll uh, go with Ms. Carissa Gilman. Hernandez and then Ms. Crenshaw, and that'll conclude our speakers. Uh, Ms. Gilman Hernandez, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Carissa Gilman Hernandez. I live on the 4500 block of the Lozen in the 15th Ward. Um, I hadn't actually planned to give um, spoken comment on Board Bill 2. I'd planned to just submit a written um, statement. However, on Friday, um, I attended, um, I volunteered at an event that Mutual Aid hosted along with some other organizations um, that was a rental and utility assistance. Um, it was supposed to go from 4 to 7 p.m. And leading up to it, I really thought we would be lucky if we had even 20 people um, attend. I actually brought work to do um, in my downtime. Uh, we ended up with 50 people officially registered that we were able to. Uh, get the contact information of, and we had to turn away others. People began lining up for this event at 3 p.m. This is the first event many of them had ever heard of that was people actively helping those who needed rental assistance. Um, and they brought their personal information and they handed it over to people that they just had to trust uh, that we were there with good intentions and that we would um, handle that re information respectfully. Um, it was said on Thursday that the sky won't fall if this process takes more time. Um, for those 50 households and many more in the city, the sky has already fallen. Um, our city is not prepared for the fallout from the eviction moratorium is lifting. Uh, we aren't prepared to ensure that we can keep people in their homes, um, that those who we can't keep in their homes have a safe space to live next. I don't know if anybody on this board has ever applied for an apartment with an eviction on your record, but it is far more expensive to do so. You get less quality place to live and you're expected to be grateful for the opportunity because a landlord took a risk on you. Meanwhile, we all had to survive a pandemic together. Um, our city is out of time to get prepared. Um, being generous, we've had over a year to plan for all of this. Um, the mayor has made a genuine attempt at a community and data-driven process. The Stimulus Advisory Board has given us a data and community-backed recommendations. 
Uh, we cannot get any of the time back we've already lost, but we can move with the urgency needed to ensure these federal funds actually act as a stimulus for St. Louis and not a band-aid to a crisis we're allowing to happen. Um, I highly recommend that this board take on the, uh, the mayor's recommendations, um, and I appreciate the time to speak. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate your comments. Um, all right, and lastly, on our speaker list for today, uh, we have, uh, according to my list, joining us by phone, uh, Ms. Ann Crenshaw. Ms. Crenshaw, are you on the line? Ms. Crenshaw, I think it's star six to unmute on Zoom. Okay, well, um, she can maybe join us at a later meeting. Uh, Chairman, I think we've exhausted our speakers list. Anything else? Okay, um, no, um, I want to say that we're going to have a, another meeting tomorrow. I spoke with the president. Um, he's he's for around four o'clock. Um, there's a lot of work to try to encourage businesses, nonprofit and for-profit businesses to um, speak before the committee. And uh, I certainly support that. And uh, any other questions from committee members? I'll just go around and see if anybody, you know, have any uh, comments about anything, and then we'll wrap it up. Okay, all women Davis. Mr. Chairman, I don't have any questions. I'll just make a brief comment because uh, when I hear residents have such passion and understanding about the crises, I want them to know that we have other alternatives that could have been put in place to move these efforts forward to help those with these issues. And it's still not too late because even in dealing with this deal, it still won't be passed for weeks. And what we need to do is to employ the opportunities that we have currently and the funds that are sitting there currently and get this job done on behalf of the residents. I said this three times in the last two weeks I don't understand the delay. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Alderman Cohn. Alderman Cohn. Uh, Alderman Coulter had that up. Uh, Pam Boyd. Alderman Pam Boyd. No questions. Alderman Muhammad. No questions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Alderman Martin. No questions. Thank you. Alderman Narayan. No questions, thank you. Alderman Evans. No questions, thank you. Okay, so it looks like we've gone around. Um, I believe everybody was here, so no need to excuse any Alderman. Okay, well, again, uh, we should be getting a notification out about uh, having a subsequent meeting uh, tomorrow at four o'clock for businesses and nonprofits. And with that, I will consider the HUDS committee adjourned. Thank you, Thank everybody. You.